Hello, welcome to the Nintendo Bros podcast. This is Pete. And this is Derek. And we're back for another bi-weekly chat about video games. How are you, Derek? <laughs> uh, I'm doing good. It's pretty hot uh, up here, but it's pretty good. How about you? Yeah, no, the weather is nice. Yeah? Yeah. Um, still been playing a lot of games. <laughs> Doesn't stop me. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, let's get right into it, because there's some exciting rumors this week that we've been uh, been wanting to talk about. Yeah. Um, so, apparently Donkey Kong is coming from the Mario Odyssey team, which is EPD Tokyo, or uh, the same team that made Galaxy, and also Jungle Beats. I mean, it's a rumor, but yeah. Uh, well, it's a rumor that's backed up by a couple sources. Uh, it's not just one yeah, place. But- that's been true with like even the Metroid Prime trilogy, and we know how that's been going so far. So. It's still coming. <laughs> <laughs> still coming. Um, well, I don't know. This rumor has some weight behind it. Uh, yeah, I it, agree. It, it makes more sense to me uh, in a way than Metroid Prime trilogy. Like this, this rumor almost doesn't sound that crazy. Uh, I agree. I agree. I think it's likely, especially considering there's a Donkey Kong ride opening at the new Super Nintendo theme park. Nintendo, what's it called? Super Nintendo World. Um, yeah, or yeah, Super Nintendo World. So I think they're gonna want Donk. I think they're gonna want to position Donkey Kong as kind of like their number two, uh, you know, fun mascot platformer to Mario, which it, which he is. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, get him up there with the Mario with the with the rest of the big players, you know. Yeah, I'm just surprised. Like we're talking about the rumor, I'm surprised that the game's gonna be another side-scrolling game. I just thought, you know, with the expertise of this company of 3D games, that I thought that maybe this game would be like a 3D Donkey Kong, like Donkey Kong 64. But, uh, I mean, I, I think it'll still be great. I just thought, you know, that territory is so claimed by Mario already. And I know that there's been the retro games that are have been phenomenal. Um, I just think it'd be, you know, they have the opportunity with a new company running the Donkey Kong game that has experience that they might change it up a bit, but... I'm not. I'm not disappointed or anything. I just thought, you know, they had a chance to kind of change it up. Yeah, I mean, okay. Well, on one hand, that ru- the rumor said it's going to be 2D. Um, one of the people who leaked it said it was going to be 3D initially, and then I think he retracted on that. Um, something like that happened. So the rumor is now that it's it's 2D, but we don't know. It's still a rumor, right? It could it could be 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. I mean, you're right. And I mean, we already have a 2D Donkey Kong on Switch, which is uh, Tropical Freeze. And I don't know. I, I feel like I'm always down for more high quality 3D platformers because you're right. Mar- it's like Mario's the only one, basically. Yeah, and I, I also I differentiate uh, Mario and Donkey Kong because I find Donkey or Mario a little bit more party fun, family friendly, and Donkey Kong really. At least the ones that Retro's made in the, the three by uh, Rareware back in the day, there there's some serious challenge there. So there are some difficulties. So I'm, I'm actually that's one of my concerns. We can talk about that later. It's probably my biggest concern with this new company uh, taking over Donkey Kong. Well, I mean, on one hand, they're a great developer, so I have full faith they're going to make a good game. Um, but it's weird. It's almost as if 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 Retro was doing a Donkey Kong Country three that was two D, I'd almost be more excited than. It's like, oh yeah, a fresh new team when they're not going to call it country, they're going to rename it. It's like, yeah, it's kind of, they need some sort of refresh here. Because, uh, like, coming off of Tropical Freeze, I think they know there's going to be a lot of comparisons. You know, you can't just make it worse than Tropical Freeze. Yeah, and you can't really get better than Tropical Freeze either. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to, it's, like, I was thinking, like, what could they do in the 2D space that would be unique? Uh, maybe it's doing it like an open world style, uh, almost like a Metroidvania of a Donkey Kong. Uh, or they're doing it uh, as one long, long level. Like, you know, rather than break it into levels, just have one long, consistent level <laughs> loading. Yeah. I also <laughs> see it, because um, you said they also developed Jungle Beats, right? Yeah. Because I, I remember playing Jungle Beats, and I loved that game because it wasn't just left to right. You know, sometimes you had to go up and down, and then, like, it was almost more maze-like. It was a bit more open. Not necessarily open world, but I did like the, the level design of that game. I, I played that game... I played it on GameCube. <laughs> with the I know, me, beat, me too. With I, the I, I, I platinum starred every single level, which is not easy to do. Yeah, that's a great game. I don't know if I'd yeah. put it ahead of Retro's Donkey Kong games, but still a great game. Yeah, me neither. So the only concern I do have about this game is, you know, when I, when I think about a team that's a Mario team and a team that's made... Sorry, you can hear the motorcycle speeding outside. <laughs> but uh, um, when I think about, you know... Um, 
Super Mario Odyssey or even any of the other Mario games, um, I think of really easy gameplay. And uh, when I think about the Donkey Kong franchise, you know, it's not like this company necessarily has to reinvent a whole bunch of stuff. The, the gameplay of the actual Kongs feels good. So what I care about is the creativity and the difficulty. And while Odyssey has creativity, you know, there is kind of an emptiness and kind of simplicity there where I'm looking for a little bit more out there ideas. You're saying, you're I saying think, Odyssey was too easy? I think Odyssey was really easy, yeah. But I mean, if you, there's some, there is some challenge in there, for sure. Yeah, a little bit, maybe. But I just, I think of Donkey Kong as like, you know, there are some really tricky levels. And I also think Donkey Kong, especially the, the Tropical Freeze, you know, there's some just wild out there ideas. Like, I remember those jelly levels. Like, what a crazy I- I idea to throw into a game. Yeah. And and I just... Love that. Yeah, I'm just curious about how um, the Mario Odyssey team will kind of push those boundaries in the Donkey Kong world. Because, again, I'm not, I'm not saying Odyssey is a bad game by any means. I think Odyssey is a fantastic game. But it didn't really push the boundaries as far as level design goes i thought the character movement of mario was fantastic so i think you know donkey kong and and the gameplay will feel really good i just hope the levels hold up to that um the high standard that i i personally have from retro and rareware well i mean uh i don't disagree that donkey kong has always been a little bit of a harder game than mario even the originals seemed harder than you know mario and yoshi's island yeah um but I don't... I mean, we can, we're going to get into this later because we're going to talk about ranking the 3D Marios and 3D Zeldas. But um, I don't agree that Odyssey's levels aren't uh, well-designed. I think they're the master class of 3D world design. And they're you get ones that are both big and wide and tall and ver- vertically designed. And there's all sorts of hidden stuff in there. I mean, I, I have a whole new opinion about Odyssey after my replay. So... Um, I have nothing but excitement. No matter what they do on this, uh, I just think... I mean, again, talking again, if it's 3D or 2D. If it was 3D, I, I just would be so much more excited about what they could do with it. Um, yeah. I don't know what they can do in a 2D Donkey... I don't even know what Retro could do in a 2D Donkey Kong Country that doesn't feel like it's been topped. Like To me, it's kind of like, give us a, an HD uh, uh, remaster of Donkey Kong Country Returns and then do something in completely new, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm. That's why, again, I also like the idea of going 3D with it, just to give that fresh take on it. Because I, I also go back to the idea of, um, you know, when Crash Bandicoot 4 came out, and you've played it, I haven't played it, I, I still mm-hmm. want to. But did it feel that different than the the original trilogy? Uh, the original trilogy remastered, it kind of felt similar to that. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. But yeah, yeah it has a, has a Crash Bandicoot definitely has a feel. But I don't think Donkey Kong has ever really been established in 3D. I mean, it's easier said than done for us to be like, oh, should be 2D or should be 3D and not 2D when it is a lot more work to make a 3D game. It's a lot, yeah, it's a lot I, yeah. less accessible. I mean, but if you look at Odyssey, it's sold 20 million copies. It's a huge seller. I like, clearly, it's, it's outsold all the 2D Marios on Switch. It's outsold even uh, the new Super Mario Bros., which used to be a massive series. So I think people want 3D platformers. Yeah, I agree. Um, Especially, and again, that's another thing is, I would already mentioned that, but Mario Odyssey, the movement of Mario feels so good in the 3D space. Like, just the amount of different movesets that you can do to traverse the world, mm-hmm. it feels really good. So I have a lot of faith, if they did go in the 3D route, um, to make Donkey Kong and the Kongs, or whoever you're playing, feel really good to move around. And I think that's kind of one of the reasons... Um, you know, Mario 64, I know it's an, or sorry, not Mario, DK64, and I know it's an old game, didn't feel that good or didn't have as long lasting appeal, is it just kind of felt clunky. And again, I know it's a 64 game, but if you compare it to, you know, the movement of Mario 64, it's night and day. So if they can get that kind of fluidity, kind of really fun movement going with uh, Donkey Kong in a 3D space on the Switch, I could see it being a really awesome game. Yeah, I mean, Donkey Kong 64 is really the only comparison point, and I feel like there's no... It's, and that's too dated to even really compare I to. I agree. Um, I feel like nowadays, um, there's only a few different ways you can take a 3D platformer, and that's either more of a course clear style, like a Crash Bandicoot or a 3D World or 3D Land, or more of a collectathon sandbox style, like the 64 Odyssey. 
Um, and to me, I think, you know, where, where DK64 was that sandbox style of, hey, here's a big world to collect things in, more or less. I actually think it should go in more of the linear, course clear 3D design kind of uh, world. Like, oh, like so like Mario 3D World. Yeah, or like um, Crash oh, I never, Bandicoot. I never, where it's I never even more, thought of it. That's, more, like that's you're, you're just running forward for a bit. And yeah. Like, uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, or there's two, maybe there's 2D sections. So like it almost, they almost scratch that itch in uh, Tropical Freeze in a few moments when, you know, you're in the minecart and there's like three ways to jump and it kind of, the camera kind of goes behind you. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I honestly, yeah, and I, I think that's a cool idea. I never even thought about that. I, I honestly was thinking a 3D world, like either level based or fully open world, and I thought that was way more interesting than the other I, ideas. I, just, I, I like, I, I, I like, I, yeah. I don't, I don't think Donkey Kong is like fun to necessarily explore a big world in. I think he's more fun to, you know, have extreme platforming, running along bridges that are breaking, you know, jumping in a minecart. Like, I'd rather just get right to the fun with DK and Mario. I'm maybe more okay to run around and explore yeah i I just mean i know what you mean but i just see it as you know again it's how fun it is to move the character that really decide like decides whether that's going to be fun or not and i just imagine you know donkey kong swinging from ropes and sliding down tree like tree trunks and jumping in water and having jumping on an animal and i can see it being a really cool open world design but i again i i hadn't even considered that 3d world kind of idea and like level based be fun and with I, the multiplayer as well a diddy and a dk yeah i think that'd be really cool and i think like you said you could you could pack in way more cooler stuff in that level design uh yeah i think that's an awesome idea i never even considered yeah, that yeah yeah um yeah I, I was almost thinking you know maybe in you know behind and closed doors with nintendo it does make sense for them to say okay well we have mario we've got zelda we've got pokemon now what, what's the next thing we can make big all of us fans are saying oh bring back pikmin or bring back f-zero or, or something obscure or kid icarus we know those franchises aren't big but donkey kong does have the p- potential i think so i think it, they are bringing it maybe i mean i'm just kind of like running with this rumor but um what if their plan was to release a new donkey kong and alongside a new diddy kong racing uh, that, know, that would be cool. <laughs> we know D- Diddy Kong recently had an update to his uh, render, to his like official render. His co- the hair color changed or something. Um, and they have a new ride coming with the mine carts. Um, and we I also mean, know the Mario Kart team. It's in, they're in a weird spot where Mario Kart Eight Deluxe is still a, such a fantastic pick- package and still selling, but we also want more kart racing fun. So to me, the the, the perfect middle ground is to release a Diddy Kong Racing. It'll probably be a huge seller. Uh, go right for that Mario Kart 8 crowd, the kart racing crowd, and also just bolster another franchise into the high heavens. So I have this wild dream now of us getting this Donkey Kong-themed E3. Um, because, you know, in all this, to keep running with the rumor, uh, says to me that we might not be seeing Breath of the Wild 2 at E3. <laughs> so... Um, oh, really? You think this is actually... Near, do you think this will come out this year, this Donkey Kong game? Yeah, I think they need something for this holiday, and I, if it's not going to be Breath of the Wild 2, they're going to need something big like this, like a Donkey Kong. Big platformer. Yeah, right? that'd be that'd be cool. I don't know if it's the big holiday game, but I guess they could, they could, you know, hold it up as one. I don't know. I still think Breath of the Wild 2 has a good chance of coming out this year. Yeah, I'm just dreaming here. I, I would love to see a Diddy Kong Racing from the Mario Kart team. Yeah, I think Diddy Kong Racing sounds like an awesome idea, and... You know, it does raise that question of what has that team, the Mario Kart 8 team, been working on? Because, you know, let's say they want to bring out Mario Kart 9 for the the next Nintendo system. They still have another four years or whatever it is to, to make that game, to bring it out on launch or near launch for the next system. Yeah. So what have they been working on? What can they release the mid, you know, mid-September, or sorry, mid-Switch kind of lifetime? And I think Diddy Kong Racing is a really cool idea. The only thing I, I would counter that with is, you know, Diddy Kong is already in Mario Kart 8. No, he's so... not. No, he's not. Oh, I thought he was. No. Oh, okay. Well, I take back what I said. Okay, I, I am excited he, he, then. He was in Mario Kart for Wii, and he was in Mario Kart Double Dash. Right, the and Wii. I okay. believe Mario Kart 7 on... No, I don't think so. I think he was cut from 7 as well on 3DS. So, yeah, maybe, honestly, I think that would be an awesome idea, especially if they brought Donkey Kong and uh, Diddy Kong Racing. That would be a one-two punch. That would be awesome. And also just seeing that Nintendo's now bringing Donkey Kong in-house, you know, they're treating it like a big franchise. It's not a 
it's not a retro handoff to the do the American branch game anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're going to have a lot more. Is. If they're having th the better way to look at it is, uh, if this rumor is true, you said it's EAD Tokyo that's making it. Yeah. EPG. EAD to yeah, they're not a you know they're they make heavy hitter games. They don't make the you know they're not going to have one of their big developing companies make a game that's you know a small game or a million seller. Like if they are making Donkey Kong, Nintendo is is putting money into EAD Tokyo to make this game a big game. Yeah, I agree. And they've, they've got to have been working on something since Odyssey that's not other than Bowser's Fury. Yeah. You know, and I think that Bowser's Fury having come out, it to me feels like we're not likely to see a 3D Mario from them right away. Like, but it, they've got to work on something other than 3D Mario games. Yeah. Uh, for, I mean, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Mario Odyssey 2 appear in the next year too and that actually be the the real thing they're working on. I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, I think Again, I think this Donkey Kong rumor seems more likely than unlikely. Yeah, and I mean, among Pokemon, uh, it's not going to be... Metroid and uh, Bayonetta, like, they, they need those kind of games like Donkey Kong that bring in the wide mm. audience. Good for kids, you know? Yeah, more family-friendly and more couch co-op and fun, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, another piece of news is um, Nintendo unveiled that... Uh, sorry, what's the... I don't have the name of it in front of me. That new Builder game. You heard about this? Oh, the coding game, right? Yeah. Um, yeah I forget the name, but yeah, look, I, I watched the video on it. Uh, are you going to get it? It's like a lower price. I'm not going to get it, but uh, I honestly, I would if anyone should get it, I would recommend it to my friends that have kids. Okay. Because it's one of those games that looks like, almost like Scratch. I don't know if you've ever heard of Scratch. It's, I think it's on, on Steam, or I think it's just a website, honestly. And it's like beginner coding. It like shows you exactly kind of how that action and effect and you make loops and things like that. How uh, kind of the building blocks of coding. And I think that's great for kids, you know, age 6 to 12. If they want to get into coding. So yep. it's, educa it's educational and fun. And I, I think there's a lot of things you could do with it. And I, I, you know, if there's anything I've learned about the Labo kind of stuff, um, Nintendo fans are going to do some crazy stuff with it. <laughs> Well, I mean, some of the games, mini games they showed in the trailer look pretty cool, though. Like, you can really yeah. design it pretty heavily, and then you can go online and, and find them yourself and play other people's versions, and then you can actually see their code as well. So you could yeah. go online, play, play, you could actually, like, put your game online to share, and then have other people see your code. And I know a lot of people who try to get into, like, you know, school for coding. Uh, these are great ways to, like, build your portfolio and, you know, practice and, and learn. Yeah, I, I don't... I don't think this is complex enough to to write it on a resume, but I uh, I, I think again I think if there's a a way to get kids interested in coding, because the real as an educator I know like the reality is coding is such a prominent part of the workforce now that you know really kids should be learning th those skills. Um, so I think Nintendo is really smart to to have this come out because I think it will actually sell really well. Because, you know, this is an easy, accessible, educational coding tool. And a lot of people, and I'm betting a lot of people in Japan are the same way, where they want their kids to learn coding early. And saying, hey, it's a video game for their kids. It's a really simple way to do that. Yeah, I'm surprised that it's also not full price. It's only twenty nine ninety nine. So I I, I couldn't shocked. imagine it being full price. I could well, see maybe thirty nine ninety nine. One two so. switch was full price. Yeah, but that's because it was a launch game, and they knew that people like those crappy mini games at launch. You know, speaking of which, the moment they do drop the price of that, I do want to buy it. Like once it's really, really cheap, which it hopefully will be at one point, years from now, when I can get it for ten dollars, I still want to try it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I agree. It looks cool. Uh, but yeah, the garage thing I think is cool. I think it actually has a good chance of being successful as well. Probably better than the Labo all three kits, but perhaps not more successful than. Um, what's it called? Ring Fit Adventure. Which yeah, is no way. Next topic. exercise game. Exercise games do way better. But uh, yeah, anyways, that brings me to our, my next topic: is Nintendo recently revealed some software sales. Um, the Switch is now at eighty-five million units sold. Look, no, not looking like slowing down. Yeah, it's, it's actually selling better right now in Japan, at least, than it was last year. Yeah, and it's also selling better when, uh, than PS2 uh, aligned. So yeah, that's, cra that's crazy. It, people think it has a chance of being the best-selling console ever. 
Um, and I mean, it very well could be if they have a Switch Pro come out and they have a whole second wave of big games. Mm-hmm. Um, you really never know. But I think for sure it's going to sell 100 million units. And I think for sure it's going to be one of the top selling consoles ever. It's going to be up there with the DS at 150 and the PS2 at nearly 150 as well. Oh, yeah. I think it'll be definitely crack 120 at least easily and then go from there. Yeah, I feel like it would have to really fall off. Um, to, the, to only, the only thing, though, is sometimes Nintendo systems do fall off in the last couple of years of their life, to be honest. That's true, but I think the Switch is just too well-rounded. It's not like... I, I, it's not I based agree. on first party uh, ten pole releases or Wii Sports, and you know. Um, and I think a Switch Pro. I think tons of people that own a Switch will buy a Switch Pro, and I think their sales are just gonna keep being crazy. I, I need, yeah, I'm gonna get a Switch Pro day one. Um, Good luck. But yeah, me too. Yeah, me well, too. I'm gonna, the, the moment it's announced, I, I need to like do anything I can to get in the queue for a for a, uh, to buy one. You know, like yeah, and you and I you, you and like 5 million other people. Well, you and me should get in on it where you and me and maybe one other person agree to like order 3 of them. You know. Oh, that's what I always will try to order more than one just to I mean, I'm not going to scalp them for people that are against scalpers, but I would definitely give you one and then sell it to you or whatever. Yeah, okay. Um I I actually buy as many as I could knowing scalpers these days. Like if I had a PS5 like on, you know, in its box right now, I could make a little probably a little bit of money. Yeah, but scalping is such an unethical practice. I know. I've never really done it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the number one selling Switch game is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at $35 million. It's going to be the best-selling Mario Kart ever. <laughs> oh, which is, you know what? I honestly, when I saw the sales of the Wii Mario Kart, and then I saw the Mario Kart 8 sales on the Wii U, I was like, no one, nothing, and I, even the sales before Mario Kart Wii, I really thought no other game would ever pass Mario Kart Wii. I just like Mario Kart. The Wii was such a huge popular system for casual games, and Mario Kart Wii was like. But yeah. the fact that Mario Kart Eight Deluxe will is just crazy to me. Yeah, it just stands to uh, to sit how just how good Mario Kart Eight really is. Like, I, it is such a fun game. It's so such good graphics, huge amount of levels. Like the the base gameplay in Mario Kart Eight is so fun. I still and, play it. I know it's me too. It's endlessly fun. It just feels so good to even do the same level a thousand times like it just feels good yeah i mean when the nintendo first unveiled the switch and they're like yeah we're bringing mario kart 8 deluxe with it i was kind of like oh whatever you know like a little port that i'll play <laughs> and like here it is like now the number <laughs> one selling game on the probably the biggest c- c- system seller as well mm-hmm. uh number two is even more disgusting which will soon be number one uh which is animal crossing new horizons at 30 32.6 million and that's in you know one year yeah, that's crazy too. That doesn't surprise me. You know, it was a perfect storm for success for the Animal Crossing, right? You had the everyone stuck at home, launches at the right time. It's already a, like a established IP that's been wildly successful, and I, it, I think being on the Switch makes Animal Crossing even more enticing for people. Yeah, and also right? like blew up on Twitter. Uh, yeah. I saw. I saw. It's like not. It's only a few million behind GTA Five uh, launch aligned Animal Crossing. Isn't that wild? That's crazy because GTA Five is on literally every platform you could think of, uh, other than Wii U. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing was on the Wii U or Switch. Um, the next one, I mean, the crazy thing is that Animal Crossing. I, here's the thing: some people think it will cross Mario Kart Eight and become the number one seller, and some people think it won't, because at this point, Mario Kart Eight is probably selling more than Animal Crossing regularly, uh, and it's just a little bit ahead. So, who knows? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I, I don't know. I like I thought about that too, but you know, Mario Kart or sorry, Market Eight Deluxe has had multiple holiday seasons to sell, and um, Animal Crossing bi- hasn't. Yeah, Animal Crossing hasn't. And a lot of people, the reason they don't buy games as frequently is just the cost, right? So when they buy a game at the holiday for their kid or whatever, they might be picking up the the game that they don't have, which is wildly successful as opposed to the game they do have Mario Kart 8 which they bought three years ago yeah you're right and I mean you never know what they'll do with bundles yeah exactly um it's just crazy to see how far Animal Crossing has come since the GameCube version or I mean the N64 version which I saw online Wasn't yeah and point? I could also see honestly a, a, a like a DLC I mean I don't I don't know if they've already said they would never do a paid DLC for Animal Crossing but I could see them doing one for you know twenty nine ninety nine and having like a, a whole second island, a whole bunch of extra costumes, extra furniture, whatever. And then if those counter sales or not, I don't know. But 
Yeah. Or they could release a second an expansion to it. Like they had kind of an expansion on uh, 3DS with the Home ha- Happy Home Designer. Yeah. I can see them doing something like that with Animal Crossing. Um okay. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm just looking at the list here. Uh, I mean, it's mm-hmm. a huge list. I don't know if I'll go through it. I mean, Nexus, Smash Bros., and then Breath of the Wild, both top selling for their franchises. Uh, then Pokemon, uh, Super Mario Odyssey. The one interesting thing to me was down the list. Again, we brought it up earlier. Ring Fit Adventure at number eleven. I don't think anyone ever predicted that. So That's over crazy. To Ten me. million units now. I, again, I think it was the perfect storm of when it came out, and you know, people wanted to stay active at home. But, it's uh, still selling well, though. In Japan, I know. All over the world. And, and honestly, a new IP to sell 10 million is crazy. And um, the fact that it's number 11 is crazy to me, too. Yeah. Right? You think you think of all the Nintendo franchises, all the games that are on the Switch. Like, I have more than 11 Switch games that I think are really awesome and fun and well made games. And I can't believe that Ring Fit beat a bunch of them. Yeah, I know. I mean, but then again, I have Ring Fit. So. I know, uh, me, me too. But I'm just saying. You know, I, I not that I dislike Ring Fit, I actually love it, but I wouldn't put it as out of all the games that I own as number eleven best selling game. No, but I do, I I do think they'll make a Ring Fit too based on these sales, and I'll probably buy it. Yeah, I hope they change it up. I, I mean, I hope they add more than just a ring, I guess, but it probably will stay the same. Yeah, or uh, maybe they'll add something small. I don't think they'll like redo it. I think it'll just be like a bunch of new, like. New adventure, Exer- basically. Exercises and levels, yeah. Yeah. Um, another one that some, shot out co-op. to me is uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 is at number 12 at uh, 9.6 million, which is just huge. It's the, now the best-selling Luigi's Mansion game. And How uh, much did the other two sell? Uh, Luigi's Mansion 1, I believe, sold around like 1 to 2 million. Uh, okay. Or no, maybe higher, maybe up to 4 or 5. Uh, and then the, the one on 3DS did really well, selling around 5 million. But this is now oh. just huge at 10 million. So it might be bigger than both of the other two combined. Uh, maybe yeah, I can't say that for sure, but it's just, I think it will be. It will probably will be at the end. Yeah, it's interesting that it's like so high up, it's such a mega franchise. Uh, I I hope they don't rush into a Luigi's Mansion Four. I hope they get the developer to do something else. Um, also on the list, I mean, next is Super Mario 3D All Stars, which has sold nine million since its release in September, which is crazy that's, to me as that's well. That's crazy to me. I can't, that game's like, I mean, it's good. I understand people want to buy it for collecting purposes. The thing that worries me about that is that whole stupid limited time being able to buy it. I think they're going to look at look at it and say, "Wow, we actually sold three old games with barely any changes, emulated, and we made basically ten million copies just by saying you had to buy it or you'd never buy it." Because then everyone's going to buy it. I don't so know. I, think gonna, I mean, we'll see what. I, think, I hope that's a one-time thing. I really. I don't, don't think it's going to. Well, I mean, the thing is, it probably would have sold close to nine million even if it didn't have the restriction you know the the limit uh and it would continue it will continue to keep selling it would sell it could sell another five or ten million copies um so i think they're losing sales if anything i think they should undo the decision and like announce at e3 that they're bringing it back out or something you know Mm -hmm. um just crazy but uh i mean i i don't think it would be that far off nine million if it was released you know indefinitely i think it would still be around nine million because it's three huge loved beloved games in hd yeah uh, Monster Hunter Rise is at six million. So the Monster Hunter Rise is now the fifteenth best already? selling. Already, yeah, at six million. Wow. Uh, so it's outsold. Get this: Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury are just below Monster Hunter Rise at five point six million. That doesn't surprise me that much because 3D World had already come out before. I know it's on a smaller system, but you know, Monster Hunter is a huge franchise. Yeah, I, I really do think 3D Mario uh, Super Mario 3D World is going to keep selling though all year and get up there. And it may, probably will eventually sell outsell Rise. Ooh, I don't know about that. I, I think Monster Hunter Rise, as far as I can tell, it got great reviews. People love it. And again, the Monster Hunter franchise is is I wouldn't say it's on par with Mario, but it's up there as one of those big hitter franchises. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll see. I, I want to. Yeah, know, we'll see. I just know Mario, right? And 3D World on on Wii U wasn't the most played game. So yeah, but not every Mario game sells that well. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I mean, they sell well, but I know what you mean. Not 20 million not, well. Not Super Mario Odyssey well. Yeah, and it's also competing with Odyssey. You're right. Um, you know, going down the list a little more, the Link's Awakening is, I'm surprised, sold 5.5 million. Uh, Age of Calamity is at 3.7 million. Um, Clubhouse, oh, wow. Clubhouse Games at 3 million. 
uh, Paper Mario and Mario Tennis at three million. There's that um, that train simulator Momotoro Dentutsu, uh, three million. Kirby All Stars Fire Emblem are at two point nine million, and then Tropical Freeze at two point six million. That, that's the whole. That's the top twenty seven games on the list. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so crazy sales. Uh, just interesting. I'm I'm wondering what will shake that top list. I mean, that's a very t- powerful top ten right now. I think some things will maybe maybe Ring Fit will replace New Super Mario Bros. or not. I don't know, but I don't know if uh, Breath of the Wild two or a Splatoon three can really or Donkey Kong two D can get on this top ten list. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I don't know what, the, what will crack the top ten, but I'm more curious about. Um, I think Breath of the Wild two possibly could. Breath of the Wild one's up there, right? Yeah, oh, Breath of the Wild one is the fourth selling Switch game at twenty two million. So I wouldn't million. be surprised. If, I wouldn't be surprised if number two got up there. Um, but I think it's interesting because um, we don't know what's coming out this year for Nintendo. And we talked about it in uh, a few episodes ago. Is you know they have projected to sell more Switches this year than previously. So, but what could possibly sell more than already we've seen in the Animal Crossing but, cart? Smash Bros, Zelda, that, Mario, Pokemon, that's what I, Mario that's Party. What, like I know, but I'm saying if they're projecting to sell more Switches, they must have a heavy hitter coming out this year. And I'm just curious what heavy hitter it is. Yeah, I mean, the, that's the crazy thing. We just thing. don't know, right? We just, uh, I mean, I it mean, could be Breath of the Wild too. Of course it could be. But I, I'm I, curious about what E3 brings in the Nintendo Direct next month of what games gonna are going to come out this this holiday season yeah i mean i'm trying to save a lot of our e3 talk for for our next conversation because that's the one that's yeah. before e3 because i could go on and on about that you're right but it's, it is interesting just to see like you know basically it's not like there's that one missing big franchise that they haven't released yet on switch it's like they've gotten through them all you know there there isn't another one so it's basically to, to, for them to have a guaranteed mega seller it has to basically be a sequel to something on this list. And I mean, we already got an announcement of for, out of the top 10, we have a sequel coming for Splatoon 2, which is 3. We have a sequel coming for Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is at number 5. We have a sequel coming for Breath of the Wild at 4. I don't think we'll get a sequel to Animal Crossing or Smash Bros. So, you know, or Mario Kart. Or, well, Mario Kart, that's a, some people think we might get a Mario Kart 9. Um, hmm. Some people think there could be, like you said, Odyssey 2. Super Mario Party 2 is also a potential to get sell 10 million because that's on the list at number 7. Uh, and may, the other thing is, you know, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is number 10 at 10.4 million sold. I wonder if it's another 2D Mario could be. I, I, I don't really think so, seeing that Mario Maker and New Super Mario Bros. is already out. Yeah, I think they need to take a break from Mario for a, like even just one year. <laughs> I, I mean, I even think if Mario Golf somehow catches on, I can see it getting way up there. I mean, Mario Tennis is at three million. I could see Mario Golf maybe hitting, maybe hitting five. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if it's quite, if it's good. I mean, ten, Aces, Tennis Aces was good, but it didn't really catch on in any like you know social media Twitter sense. You know. Hmm. Um, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think maybe they do expect Breath of the Wild two, and I mean to me, Breath of the Wild two. A 2D Donkey Kong and Super Mario Party 2 would be a huge, huge lineup for the fall. Sorry, say that. Say the lineup again. Uh, Breath of the Wild 2, um, uh, Super Mario Party 2, and a 2D Donkey Kong. Yeah, that'd be a killer lineup. Along with and then, the and Pokemon then Splat- remakes. And then Splatoon 3 comes out, you know, 2022 early. I'm thinking that uh, Breath of the Wild 2... Well, hmm. It's a hard I said one. Split, what about Splatoon 3 is what I said, though. I know. I'm just wondering. I think, actually, Splatoon 3 will come out a little bit later next year. And then we'll see Park, Pokemon Arceus Legends come out. Because that's how it's announced already, right? They've already confirmed or at least announced that Pokemon Legends is coming out early next year. Yeah. Splatoon, just, they've just said at some point in 2022. So, And I see Splatoon as kind of a spring game. I don't know why. Like a May, April. I don't see it as a winter game. Mm-hmm. Just the style of it, so I kind of see that as like a May release. I don't, I know I'm so excited because we really have no idea what's coming out the rest of this year at all. Um, yeah, I, I really hope it's like we get a huge Breath of the Wild two and feeling at E three and it's coming out this fall, but my gut says it's not it's not happening. But I, who knows? Oh, I, I'm the opposite. I think we will. 
we will get it this year. I think yeah. it'll be a, a, coming out November or December. I think definitely. Well, okay. Well, we can talk about that forever. Let's uh, <laughs> we'll save yeah. some of that next, for next, next week. Next, yeah, for next or two weeks from now. Uh, another small announcement that got me excited: Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two remake coming to Switch finally on June twenty fifth. So, doesn't I mean I I really want that game, but I'm not going to get it on the Switch. I'm so torn because I know right now I can get it on Xbox Series X and it's 120 frames and it's 4K. That's why I'm yeah. That's why I'm getting it. There's get just PS5. something about this game being portable to me that makes it the perfect game to play portably. It's like I want to yeah. play it portable. I, I'm just not a portable Switch player. So I my okay. my Switch is strictly a console. So if I had to choose, I'm picking the 120 frames. I wish there was a way that I could buy it on one system and have it on all systems. <laughs> if only life was like that. Yeah, totally. Um, okay. Well, I, I think I'm going to wait to hear how it is on Switch because I think they've confirmed it's going to be 30 frames a second. And I just want to maybe get a little taste of the impressions or what that's like before buying it on switch because i might just i mean i heard the 120 frames makes that big of a difference for tony hawk yeah plus i'm sure the online modes work better um okay another little bit of news uh from tecmo koei hisashi koei numa uh he works on the musou games like uh hyrule warriors and dynasty warriors the, the Mush- isn't it mushu uh maybe yes <laughs> oh I, I don't know i, I don't know I, i've never I called it, it i always call it musu uh um, oh, i called it yeah okay you call it mushu no, you said Musao. Musa, well, Musao. Musu. I don't know. I don't know how it's <laughs> one, of, one of our One of our listeners, I'm yeah. sure, will correct if us. One of our listeners, please correct us. Um, <laughs> someone asked them what series they would like to see turn into a, like a Warriors game. And they said, Mario and Star Wars come to mind. So that's from the creator themselves saying a both Star Wars. Star Wars to me is eh, whatever. But a Mario one would be interesting. I don't know how that would work. Um, but I can just picture Mario taking on hundreds of Goombas and Koopas with like you know a f- like a flood or or a fire flower or something. I think it could be a lot of fun actually. Yeah, it could be a lot of fun. I, I don't think I think we've discussed this before maybe, but I I just don't think Nintendo wants to put that Mario image out there. I agree. Like a violent. Like what's he gonna do? Be punching or like That's burning I mean. a whole field of them? Uh, I think Cur- yeah. Cur- to me Kirby makes the most sense. I think we've talked Kirby about makes the more. most sense. I'm just thinking about the lineup of Kirby characters that could pl- be playable characters. Um, True. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, even Do- Donkey Kong would be be a pretty good franchise to put in there. Yeah. I was thinking even Metroid, but I don't know. I don't know if Metroid would be good. It's not really the vibe of the series <laughs> to like. You know, ju- no, know. yeah, but just speaking of Metroid, I would love if they brought back the uh, the other hunters from the. I think it's the DS game, Metroid Prime yeah. Hunters. Yeah. I love those hunters, and I thought it'd be cool to bring them back. I think they brought back, I think it was Silas. Didn't, didn't or they one hint of, what, at one in uh, Metroid they, Prime 3? Yeah, I was going to say they brought one back in Metroid Prime 3. I think it was Silax. But um, he's my least favorite of all, all of them. But I think it'd just be cool to show, and maybe they'll do that in Metroid Prime 4, is show kind of a bigger world where there are other hunters, there are other bounty hunters out there, and kind of see maybe more of their interactions together or their competition of getting yeah i i hope they don't do that they tried to do that with metroid prime 3 uh and kind of you know show a bigger world show the galactic federation and i just didn't yeah i I I like the isolation i didn't like it i mean to me it should be like samus ship on her own shot down on a planet and she has to figure it out the classic yeah i just i mean doesn't have to necessarily be metroid prime is what i was trying to, to say or even you know metroid 5 um but i i think not necessarily a Mushu game, but I'd love to see a, a game where they had more hunters and more of that kind of gameplay. Okay. Well, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I think I agree with you. Metroid Prime 4, I, I like that idea of you're on your own, you're alone, no one can hear you, you got to figure it out. I, You know what I thought would be cool is if the team that made um, Super Mario of, what's it called? Super Mario Rabbids Kingdom, if they made a, a game with a similar style, but with Metroid. Like a Metroid, um, kind of like, it'd be, be like cool. XCOM, right? It'd be a little bit like Yeah, that. that'd be cool. I, I'd be against so down spa- for that. Against Space Pirates or whatever, that'd be awesome. I know they've made like a Halo and a Gears of War one now. I haven't tried them, but like it's, I, 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 I keep, what it's called, like a strategy RPG basically, but like with a, more of a shooter style. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's yeah, a game a coming to Xbox and PC soon called The Ascent. Have you heard of this? Uh, I think I've heard of it, but I haven't looked too much into it. It's, like, about it's it. kind of like a Diablo, um, you know, kind of top-down 
shoot in all directions, except it's more with guns, not with other weapons. And it looks awesome. Oh, yeah, I, I saw this. Yeah, I, I saw the trailer for it a while, a while back, like last week or two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, even a Metroid in that style. Or a Donkey Kong. Yeah, that'd that be style. cool. This it, game reminds me of, yeah, a lot of Diablo and uh, Tomb Raider, uh, Temple of Osiris. Yeah, that was a cool game. I, I did play that. It was free on PSN. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, let's get into our actual, the thing we were going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 40 minutes later. Let's start our real topic. Well, I was hoping we would rank the 3D Marios and Zeldas. I don't know. Where, I didn't do Marios because you didn't tell me Marios. So. <laughs> I figured I'd surprise you because I think our Zeldas will be exactly the same. I also did, I misread what you asked me to do and I did the 2Ds mixed with the 3Ds. So I'm pulling out the 3Ds now. No, I, I only talked about the 3D Zeldas. I know. I just misread. So I'm, yeah. I'm fixing mine. Yeah. I wouldn't really be the best judge for the 2Ds because I haven't played the Oracle ones. I've only played the remake of Link's Awakening. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I guess I played most of them still. Uh, but I, yeah. And I, we're, uh, we're not counting 3D. Like, we're counting 3Ds as the not top down ones. Yes. Right? Yeah, you know, like Phantom Hourglass it, doesn't count. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. I did think about that, but no, those don't count because those are the 2D style, the top-down style. Yeah, so like, yeah, third person versus top-down. So now, let me let me tell you my whole list, and then I think, because I think this will be a short conversation because I think you'll agree, and I actually think there's <laughs> only one thing that you'll do different than mine, because there's only six games, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think we there's won't There's one thing agree. I think we'll do different. Okay, so my number one to, is Breath of the Wild. Disagreed. Number two is Ocarina of Time. Agreed. Uh, number three is Majora's Mask disagreed <laughs> number four twilight princess okay yeah uh number five the wind maker and number six skyward sword so i i thought your major difference would be skyward sword would be above twilight Pr- t- uh, the wind maker like the wind maker would so, be your number six mine is identical to yours except one and two switch three and four switch and five and six switch so i have ocarina of time above breath of the wild okay to me those I've, are almost interchangeable I, I i agree i think it's just which one you which kind of feel of a game you enjoy more you know, where Breath of the Wild is more open, very kind of ex- exploration adventure, Ocarina of Time is kind of that dungeon to dungeon, getting those power-ups, and I just enjoy that more. But I think both are, you know, high nine kind of games. To me, yeah, they either could have been, like, I, I debated whether Ocarina of Time was top or not. And I just, to me, I ultimately land on Breath of the Wild because the feeling, you know that epic kind of feeling you get from Ocarina of Time that no other game gives you? Yeah. I didn't think any other game would do that again. As I got older, I thought that was just a point of being a kid, right? So then I actually got it again from Breath of the Wild. I was that much more blown away. You know, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Ha- happened. Uh, so that's why I ultimately landed on Breath of the Wild being number one. Okay, I mean, yeah, okay. Either way, interchangeable. Then the middle two, you put Majora's Mask above Twilight Princess. I put Twilight yeah. Princess and then Majora's Mask. Um, again, I think I, I, would t- I can totally see both sides. I think Twilight Princess is... Uh, it has some issues. And I think Majora's Mask has some issues too. But when I think again of what I want and like out of Zelda, I think of, you know, a bunch of dungeons, a bunch of upgrades and items to use, um, a, a huge world. I, I just think Twilight Princess has a lot more content there that I enjoy. And Majora's Mask, again, it, it's probably the most out there of all the 3D Zeldas. And I really did like it. I think it's a really cool game. But it just, it was missing some things that I, I look for in Zelda. So I, I think it's a I love, game. I love that Majora's Mask kind of felt like Ocarina of Time already happened. It had room to explore and it did something so different. It, the whole time mechanic, like it was, it was pretty brilliant of a game that hasn't been replicated ever. Yeah, I think um, it's a phenomenal game. I just, Twilight it's Princess I to me feels kind of like a like an HD recycled Ocarina of Time. Yeah, I um, agree. That's why, I, that's why I think it's high up there. Yeah, okay. And then the last two, bottom two, yeah, as you said, I put Skyward Sword above Wind Waker. I think, yeah. honestly, I think Skyward Sword is not a great game. I think it has great moments. And I think um, I actually really liked the 3D um, or the motion plus sword controls. I thought it was really cool. Um, but, yeah, to me, Wind Waker is just the worst 3D Zelda. It's not even not even a contest. I know people are going to disagree with me, but it's it's – almost everything about it is the worst of all six you know i i look at the bottom three as kind of like the flawed ones so I, my twilight princess wind waker and skyward sword like they're all not they don't really hit it out of the park where i feel like the other three have like ocarina and majora's both hit it out of the park so does breath of the wild 
Um, I, yeah, I see, yeah, <clears throat> so I see it similar. What's worse between Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess is sort of hard because they both have their highs and lows, right? I mean, I, I t- ultimately what made me decide Sky, Skyward Sword is worse because it definitely has some moments, especially some of those dungeons and those fights and using the using the motion controls. Like it's it's awesome, uh, and the story is really a lot better too. But I don't want to replay it. And I'll, and I I feel like I want to replay the Wind Waker once in a while, even though I only want to play the first you know third of it or half. Once I have to start going around the whole ocean, it's not so fun. It's not a fun game to complete, but to me that first third or first half is a lot of fun. Where Skyward Sword oh. is at such a, more of a mixed bag. Much I more would m- I I would never play Wind Waker again. <laughs> Skyward Sword I would probably never play again either. But I think I think back of fondly of Skyward Sword saying oh I had a really good time with it. It was a fun game. I played it twice. 100 percent of it twice when did you play it. when did you play the wind waker on wii u i played a bit of it on the gamecube and then i played it on uh yeah the wii u okay yeah because i played and it i played it on the gamecube when it first came out so i think the wind waker I, just it ha- it has nothing there for me it's it's a long traveling it's slow traveling the dungeons are super easy the story's kind of silly I, I mean it's a beautiful game as far as graphics go i, I think the cell shading is such a it's a beautiful art style and it worked well for that game but it just there's nothing that, like there's nothing there that captivates me even a little bit like i don't think there's anything about that game that i mean again I, i'm not saying i'm not it's not a four out of ten we're talking about just zelda games yeah. are elite games so of course it's a fantastic game in its own you know right on its own yeah but in the bubble of Zelda, it just doesn't do anything for me. So it just, I don't know. It's I know, there's something about uh, just being in the world. It's kind of I can't really describe. It. It's not necessarily the dungeon design or the gameplay, but it's like when I get on that boat and I go to another island, it's like I feel like I'm in that world a little bit. And I love the style and the sun setting and the music and like just like the, the characters. And it, I know the dungeons are easy and straightforward, but it's like they're still beautiful and fun. Uh, and they have a lot of new gameplay elements throughout. Uh, they kind of, you know, they introduce you controlling a second character, uh, and just I don't know, it's just it's more memorable to me. Skyward Sword to me is like the bird thing was never fun, and I don't feel like right. I'm in that world. I feel like I'm it's just a warp point with one town in the sky, and yeah, I, uh, I just I, yeah, I, they both have their strengths and weaknesses, you know. I, I think Skyward Sword suffers from a lot of um, repetition, right? You had to fight that same boss three or four times. You had to go to the same three areas more than once. Um, so I think they could have added more diversity, but when I think of like, again, the sword combat and even just like going through, I think it's Fiora woods or whatever and fighting the spiders and then, you know, solving the puzzles and running around, slashing your sword and it's moving the way your hands moving. That was, uh, to me, that's an unforgettable experience. Like there's really no other game where you're sword fighting and you're actually wielding the sword. Uh, To me, that's like, that's such a cool experience that, you know, until VR really becomes a thing with those motion controls like that, we won't really see that again. So I, I don't know. I think it was revolutionary kind of on how it was played. Yeah. I just think, I just think the content in the dungeons were just kind of, you know, repetitive and lackluster. True. Okay. Well, I mean, they're, like you said, they're all, they're all great games. I, I'm, I'm still surprised you have Twilight Princess above Majora's Mask. That to me is the biggest offense on your whole list. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I, the more I think about it, the more I would actually reconsider that because I actually agree with what you said is about the top three are masterpieces and the bottom three are great. Yeah. Or whatever. And I think Ma- Majora's Mask, you know, I, I actually, I think personally, I like Twilight Princess more. But I agree that Majora's Mask is probably the better game. and I really enjoyed replaying it on the 3DS. And, uh, you know, I only played Twilight Princess once on the Wii. Uh, so I'm if they re-release it on Switch, I'll play that again. Yeah, and I, I think... Yeah, I mean, I almost, I'm almost switching my choice right now. Because Twilight Princess, I think, again, it, it hits me better. But there are some areas where it's like, oh, that's a slog, or that's not that great. Where Majora's Mask, really, there is no... There's no fat to be trimmed. Every part yeah. of Majora's Mask is a great game. Even though I feel like Majora's Mask is a bit short and there's stuff that I wish was in that game, there's no part of that game where I say, oh, not this part. Yeah. Where Twilight, Twilight Princess, there, there's many moments where I'm like, oh my God, I have to do this again. Yeah, so, I feel like that, that's the worst, that feeling of, oh, not this part. Uh, I feel and, yeah, so that, much about that in Twilight, or sorry, The Wind Waker and Skyward Sword. Those two, it's like <laughs> yeah, almost exactly. half the game. But yeah, exactly. and Twilight Princess, I feel like it's a big, significant part of it. Like the first, the very beginning, especially. 
And that's yeah, the thing. And like, it, Breath yeah. of the Wild and Ocarina of Time have like such even not even Majora's Mask. I don't think has a great intro, but the intro to o- Ocarina of Time and Breath of the Wild is so amazing. It just makes you want to start again, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so okay, interesting, interesting changes on our lists there. But uh, the next, I I did a ranking of my 3D Mario's. If you tell tell me them all right now, and I'll see if I can do it. Okay, I think yours is gonna be a little different than mine because I've changed mine a little bit. So number one is Galaxy One and Two. Okay, you put them together. Yeah, I put them together. I just look at them in the same. If you don't want to put them together, then it would be Galaxy One, then Two. Uh, okay. Replaying Galaxy on Switch in HD was amazing. It made it one of my game of the years. Just just from that, I think it's like it's like a Mario on on steroids with epic set pieces and new ideas, and it's really tight gameplay. You like never need to worry about the controls. Um, but in a close number two is actually Odyssey. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that moved way up the list because I did a replay of that. And it's just like, as, in terms of moment to moment, it's such a fun game. It's it's almost perfect. And I think um, it's one of those weird games where if you choose to keep getting all the stars, you're you're not going to enjoy that like last hurdle of the game. You know, like you'll you'll breeze through the beginning, enjoy it, and then you'll kind of like go digging for stars, like a ton of that, or sorry, moons, through a ton of levels, and you and you won't enjoy it. But that first part of the game really is that good and controls that well, and is like always throwing fresh ideas at you the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's so good. Like I, it, the controls are so good; it makes every other Mario hard to play. Uh, third would be Super Mario sixty four, which actually, upon revisiting on Switch, not as good as I remember. Uh, the controls are a little stiffer, and the cameras a little fights with you a little more. And I'm, and just, yeah, I guess, you, have to, you have to like think about when it came out too. No, of course, I, and I, that's why it's so high. It's just the revolution of when it came out. But it, um, I d- it hasn't aged quite as well as I always remember because that, that that's one of the reasons why Odyssey overtook it on my list. Because before Super Mario sixty four would have been that number two spot for sure. Um, number four actually might be a controversial one: uh, Bowser's Fury. I <laughs> its own game. Okay. I okay. In I didn't a way, know that was on the list. In a way, it is kind of its own game. It's it's, its own 3D Mario game from beginning to end. It has its own story completion. Uh, it's a shorter game, but it's also probably just like yeah. I put it so high because it's pure fun. It's mm-hmm. re- well designed. It's got a lot of interesting ideas in there, and um, I just love the idea of one giant world of Mario. Uh, and then five, six, and seven. We have for five 3D World. Which I'm really enjoying on a replay. Uh, number six, Sunshine, and then number seven is 3D Land on the 3DS. I think you'll have Sunshine last. Um, I but I and maybe Odyssey not quite as high, but similar to my list. And you haven't you haven't played Bowser's Fury, so yeah. So I don't have Bowser's Fury on my list, but I'll tell you mine. I just made it real quick. So I have Galaxy one and two at the top as well. I would actually. I don't know. I'd have to play, replay two again. Two might be above one, but right now I have one on top as well. Okay. Um, after that, I have Mario 3D World. Wow. Um, you didn't, you, know even, you I, didn't even buy it. Like, I already beat. I already played as much as I possibly could on one system. I don't need to buy it twice and play it a second time. Yes, you do. Okay. I, you know what? I honestly, I it's on my wish list of games I want to get just because I want to play Bowser's Fury, and I, I'd like to have that game in my collection again for the Switch. Mm-hmm. So yeah, eventually I think I'll pick it up. 3D World, um, I did that. Wow, I'm shocked it's that high. I mean, to be honest, I, I just okay. Upon replaying it myself, I went into it being like, "Yeah, this is such a great game." And then I think it's just after coming off Odyssey, Galaxy 64, and Sunshine, I don't know the controls, the perspective of jumping. It's not. It's just not as perfect as Odyssey. Like you really, I, you really can't judge your jumps a lot of times. I just feel like it's kind of like playing. I wouldn't not necessarily as smooth as Galaxy, um, but it's like playing a 3D Mario, but playing it. Um, with the 2D Mario kind of game format, right? I yeah, like. Of course. The, uh, the, I think multiplayer it makes that game so fun, and I think the level based uh, they can do a lot of crazy ideas. And there's so many levels in that game, like it just it never ends on the levels, like right? There's yeah. so much post game content. Um, but I mean, I, again, I, I think that you know these kind of mid three or four, I, I could totally understand being swapped around, and even I think I would swap them around if I replayed them all. They would probably shuffle every time. Mm-hmm. Um, but in third place, I have Mario 64. Again, mm-hmm. classic. Uh, loved everything about it. Number four, I have is, is Mario Odyssey. Um, I agree with you. I, I think the game is phenomenal. I, I could see it being in number two if I replayed it and really thought about it. Um, I, I think you know it lost some points for me because 
almost exactly what you said. It did feel like a slog at the end. Um, and I think to me, some of the star- stars or the moons were easy to get. They felt a little easy and it felt a little bare bones at some parts. Sometimes you just feel like you're in an empty space. Like I think of like, you know, the desert level, like sometimes you just, there's nothing. You're just walking to like another zone of platforming. Well, it is a desert. Wa- it is a desert. I, I know, but I, I just think, some some of the world I, I felt like they just really didn't have as much there as people f- remember them to have. Um, I mean, it's it's just I think the thing with Odyssey is it just f- fits a weird zone between like galaxy styled course clear areas and more comprehensive you know exploring areas. So when you're used to an area like New Dong City and then you get to like one of the other like the Cloud Kingdom or the Castle Kingdom that basically have one straight line up to the boss, you know it's it's just it feels weird. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I definitely agree. It's a little bit all over the place there. But um, I don't know if I could call it bare bones. I'm having replayed it. I just so I don't mean the game bare bones. I just I think I would have liked it if they compacted the levels more into more dense areas. Like, oh. I, and I think they should have focused on less moons. I don't need fifty in a world. I need you know, give me fifteen. I, I guess the thing that really changed my opinion was that I, I agree that the completion aspect isn't as as we're like rewarding, but upon replaying it in any of the 3d marios it's not that rewarding it's terrible in sunshine it's, it's not it's probably the best in 64 but still not great and um i know and like I, galaxy I, I, one I agree, and two I... don't have great like getting those last bunch of uh, stars in galaxy one and two is not great either like the only one that gets away from this is 3d world in my opinion but all of them have that kind of weak like your repeating I, I did... levels and things like that true but i i think as mario odyssey the, the thing i remember are things like Oh, I have to do the jump rope mini game, and then I have to do the jump rope mini game again. But you, like, I mean, you I can also that, just not do that and skip it. I, I know, but I, I just to me, it's like when I'm thinking about critically appraising a game, why didn't they just have one jump rope mini game? Like, why did they? Why did a developer sit at the table and go, you know what? We already have 885 stars. Let's just do the mini game again and make that another moon. It's like I just think that's like, you know, it's it's literally padding and it's blatant padding. Where other games, you know, I agree, to, to get 100%, there are a lot of, you know, superfluous additions. But it doesn't feel as blatant as But Mario I think Odyssey. that's only a completionist mindset. Because I think for someone who's like, hey, I'm going to, like, really get good. At, it's counting my number of jump ropes. I'm going to get really good. I think for them to get something at 100, that's, like, a rewarding check mark, it is, re- is better than not having it. But if you have the feeling, like, oh, my God, I have to do this to get this... That's different. Like, it, I think it's like you weren't supposed to play that game with the completionist mindset. That's that's my whole. Yeah, I, I understand. It's like kind of like oh, the people that go Korok seed hunting in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're, it's not meant for that, and that's the thing that I yeah, enjoyed about it so, so much. Fi- I, yeah, it's... I feel like I I ran through it again and like had my own version of the adventure because you know I could have explored a different area and got a different set of moons for that level, and I didn't. So I, I kind of had my own like choice of how I completed it. Uh, yeah, and I, I really I, like I, that. I can see that I, again. I mean, we're just arguing different pins, and and I, as I said, I think Mario Odyssey could go up to number two if I really thought about it and replayed it with that kind of mindset. Because I, I will give that credit to Mario Odyssey; it is the best to play. Yeah, as far as as far as camera the feel controls. of playing, camera controls and the move set of Mario, it just feels. I mean, I talked about there's you know there's nothing to do in between like kind of a platform section and another platform section in the desert, but it's fun to do like to have nothing to do. Like I remember. Yeah. You know, in some of the, the towns or some of the levels, even if there's no moon around, I'm just jumping off walls and doing the flip, throwing Cappy, jumping off Cappy, back flip. Like, it's just fun to move around. Yeah, um, totally. But to fi- finish my list, yeah, the bottom two, I have 3D Land. I thought it was a pretty good game. I, I thought, you know, for the 3DS or whatever, it did its job. And then Sunshine and bottom, Last, right? And then Sunshine Last. And, and again, I think it's, as I said, was Wind it Waker. On its own, Mario Sunshine is a fantastic game. I didn't get to play it on the GameCube, so I don't know how big it was, you know, back then. But when I played it in the 3D All Stars uh, this past year, um, it just it isn't as good as the other the other Mario's. I think it's on par or near 3D Land for the 3DS. So I I'm not surprised that you have the opposite order. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, in in the spectrum of Mario games, it's the worst one to me clearly. Yeah, I mean, we could have a whole debate about sunshine and and, and you yeah, know, I, but uh, yeah, I generally agree. It's a, definitely a flawed game, but I had it above three land because I I just three land to me is it's so plain. It almost feels like the new Super Mario Bros. It's very vanilla. 
it's very vanilla and safe. Yeah, and it's kind of like it has none of the charm of 3D World. I feel like 3D World just completely replaces it. I would always rather play 3D World than 3D Land, where yeah. Sunshine at least has its own kind of quirky value. And I and it's the only Mario like Mario has this interesting thing where it's kind of playing between is this just a level like made of obstacles for you or is this an adventure in a world and some of them like you know galaxy one and 64 and even odyssey kind of play with this idea that no this is like there's a story happening where galaxy 2 and 3d world and 3d land kind of lean more on the you know oh it's a course clear you know just next stage next stage next stage yeah i feel like sunshine kind of goes really really far on the adventure side which i kind of appreciate like it almost feels more like a zelda adventure than that it's like it's a setting it's a world it's a complete story you can see the different areas from where you are like it's i would like to see mario do that again where like it really just leans into the story and doesn't give you any obstacles like every obstacle is motivated by the placement you know Mm -hmm. i thought that was just an interesting take and I don't know if we'll ever get back to it. So, anyways, that's my sh- sunshine spiel. Also, I-, I was there at the time, so yeah, exactly. Nostalgia. Uh, okay, interesting ranking. Um, so, let's get into our final section, which is what have you been playing? Um, so, for me, good question, Peter. Really, really surprising topic. Um, for <laughs> <Yeah>. me, <laughs> I have been playing. So, I think I mentioned last episode that i was gonna start playing last of or life is strange 2 mm-hmm. and i put it down after an hour oh wow because I, I i was playing it and i i asked myself am i having fun playing this game <laughs> <laughs> and this is not a joke I, I i like i was playing i think i got to the end of the first episode which is about maybe two hours and i i stopped and i said am i having fun playing this game or am i just burning time and i immediately stood up and i un, or i um, remove the disc from my console um, because it, it, the, I, I really liked the first game. The first game, you know, there's some tropes about teenage angst and whatever, but it really has kind of a unique story and the, and the gameplay feels fun. And it's kind of, there's a lot of curves. This, this game, the second one it did not capture me at all. It, it this is going to sound like a joke, but I'm serious. It's like the babysit babysitting the game. You're taking care of your little like nine year old brother and he's, fucking annoying he like is incessantly childish and it's like all i have to do is babysit him and like oh i gotta get him a blanket and feed him food and it's like it's just it's not fun it doesn't feel good it's a boring story i mean and it's people i I do people like this game like online like it's reviews people didn't like it as much as the first one and i was reading online about it it's and i i noticed it too after the first 20 minutes it's quite politically driven there's a lot of kind of political motifs about it about um you know race and police um force like you know police brutality and um you know kind of left wing versus right wing and i I just i I didn't it didn't really interest me so i I put that took that out and then i put in dishonored death of the outsider which is an expansion to i think the second one and i'm almost done it Lots of fun. I, I love the Dishonored series. And again, it's getting me kind of in that mood to uh, for when Deathloop comes out because it's made by Arcane Studios. So I'm really excited for uh Totally Death different Loop type now. of game. It's like the, uh, a game that you're playing versus a game that you're watching, right? Because uh, it isn't Life is Strange. It's, it's a lot of it's just oh, kind yeah, of like... Ex- you know, exactly. You're, you're, it's, mo- it's so story-driven. And then you're getting into a game where it's like moment to moment. Like you're fully in- engulfed yes. in the gameplay. Yes. Yes, where Life is yeah. Life is Strange Two again. I like Life is Strange One because the story was good, but if you're gonna play, make a story game, like it has to be real good. Because I'm sitting down to play a video game, I don't want to you know just click through dialogue and have no attachment to the characters, no attachment to the story, which is how I felt. Where Dishonored, like you said, it's just moment to moment. You know, you're you have a teleport, you're teleporting around dropping and assassinating people, sneaking in places. It's just a lot more fun. I, I always side with wanting something with more gameplay. Like, I, I'm not really... A, I don't think I'd ever buy one of those games that it's really just a story or, you know, even like... I mean, I, Me too. I, I never buy those games. But I bought Life is Strange, you know, maybe a year after it came out um, just because it was cheap. Yeah. And I loved it. So I was like, oh, I got to get the second one. And I, I'm i telling you right now, I will not be buying the, the, the next one, the True Colors that was recently yeah, announced. I, I, I still want to try games like Detroit. I still haven't tried that one yet. Uh, kind of like a visual yeah. novel. Or, um, you know, I still kind of think, like things like Phoenix Wright because it's more reading. 
And I was um, thinking about, you know, even a game, not quite uh, the exact same, but um, oh, what's that, that horror game that, like, that with the butterfly effect in the mountain? Oh, um, Until Dawn. Like a game like that, I actually like those games. I, I played the other one, Man of Medan. I, I fell off until dawn. I thought it was boring. I thought I'm like, what I, am I thought I it was not having fun. Let me I just say, same, I, same I, problem you had. I thought it was less interesting than Life is Strange one, but it's about a hundred times more interesting than Life is Strange two. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and then I've been playing Pokemon Snap still. Okay, uh, I've been you, playing Pete? a bunch of games actually, just kind of switching between. I uh, finally beat Resident Evil three. Oh, nice. Uh, pretty weak ending, as expected. Yeah, all um, Resident Evil. At some point during the game, I guess it switched me to assisted mode, and I couldn't switch out of it. So Assisted mode? Yeah. Like, um, I guess I died too many times at one point. I just and you just pressed pre- X. Pressed A to re- re- retry, and like once I was in it, I couldn't switch out. So I just finished yeah. the game on assisted, and now I'm... I mean, you get a ton of ammo. It's it's basically the same game. So you're seeing all the same puzzles and the same rooms and everything, but it's just like you just get so much ammo in life. Oh, I thought the puzzles were easier too. Uh, not that I could tell. It seemed like all the puzzles were pretty much there was no way they could be different kind of puzzles. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's okay. I mean, I don't know how I feel about it. It's pretty generic. It's kind of like a... It's also shocking to see how they fell so far from two, but I think we've kind of talked about that. Yeah, uh, I'm working my way through Titanfall two on Xbox Series the X. The campaign? Yep, just the campaign. You, I, I love you've it. Beaten it be- you've already beaten it before. right? I beat it on PS4, but I'm just playing it again on with 60 frames. It's such on a 4K. it's such a good campaign. It's it's beautiful. It's so well. It's the it's best. Just so fun. It's the best FPS campaign I think. Yeah, I think I'm definitely up there. I mean, it's probably one of my favorite games ever. It probably needs to go on my top uh, 50 list somewhere. Because uh, it's just so polished and well-designed, and the controls are so great. Yeah. Um, so I got a little bit of a shooter uh, in shooter mode on Xbox, uh, and I've been playing a bunch of different games. Uh, they had an update for Series X that lets you see, like, what games are in quick resume. So I have, like, you can set, like, that as a folder now. So I've just been jumping between a bunch of games. I decided to jump on Crackdown 3. Okay. Just random. I, I, was, I was actually looking. I'm like, hey, I need to delete some of these games. And I'm like, okay, well, let me just try it once before I delete it. Uh, just to see what all the fuss or genetic, like, I mean, I remember them showing it at like five different E3s and talking about the, the destruction. Uh, it's fun in the most generic of ways. Um, I, I feel like it's, it's fun the way, um, just cause is fun. <laughs> maybe even less because like the, the controls are like, you only lock on to enemies. So it's a very weird control scheme. Um, oh. and the, the, like the jumping around is not as bombastic as something like Sunset Overdrive. So it almost just feels it feels like it's from a different genera like a weirdly old generation. It's hard to explain. I mean, it is, it's from Xbox One, and it feels like yeah. it's from the 360. Uh, it's like 30 frames a second as well. Um, so it's like I kind of understand why it has like whatever a 65 on Metacritic, but I did, it is fun enough. Let's put it that way. You, it's like you know you take down towers, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last thing that surprised me, I kind of got like a shooter itch, and I decided to play Star Wars Battlefront Two. Um, okay. It surprised me. Game. It's so much fun. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. The I, I, first one was really fun too. Yeah, I almost want to download the first one and play it as well. I think the the servers are still running for it, but it's free on Game Pass. So I just I tried it, and like the graphics are really good, and I really like the kind of setup where you can kind of save up points, and then eventually you can become you know a, like a, 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 a like a Jedi or Darth Maul or like you know or, or a Sith. tank. Yeah, or Sith. I I don't know why. I mean, maybe it, you can tell me a little bit about it. But like, do I need to just get more kills, or is it that I need to play more overall? Like, how come I can never become a Jedi or a Sith? And I'm so in, in the game. It, I I again, I haven't played in a while. I think it's kind of like a kill streak where if you're doing really well, and I'm not sure it's just kills. It might be assists, or it might be um, doing objectives. But I, I think it might just be kills. Like the more kills you get, the the closer you are to becoming a Jedi. But it also has to do with things like. Um, if you die, it gets lowered or reset. And if other people on your team are doing better than you, because they can't have eight Jedi spawn at the same time. I see. So they have a there's a, a some kind of system where um, the lead players become those. Like it has to be the players that are that are winning. I see. On your team. Okay, because there was a one time I became a tank, but it's, I just it's a really cool system that lets you play a lot of different Star Wars characters. And it's just fun playing like a droid and being able to, one of those uh, droids that you roll on the ground and then like a turret droid. Yeah, uh, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, 
I remember when that game came out, there was a lot of flack for it because of the um, the microtransactions and purchasing of like you know the other heroes and uh, perks or whatever it is. Yeah. But the ga- the actual gameplay is is really fun. I don't think anyone was actually like harping on that because it, it is a fun game to play and you know it really does a lot of fan service. But um, yeah, I, I like that game too. Yeah. Uh, it surprised me. So yeah, that's about it uh, for games. Um, still playing Pokemon Snap. Um, yeah, great game. I love po- Pokemon Snap. Honestly, it's probably my favorite game so far. It's, uh, it's going to end this up year. on uh, my game of the year list. Like my number one game of the year is definitely Bowser's Fury, and number two is probably It Takes Two, and then number three is probably Pokemon Snap. Yeah, right now, right now, I think Pokemon Snap is probably my number, probably my number one or two. Yeah, probably number two. It takes two, I think, is higher. And Cyber Shadow, uh, the Yacht Club, Club games. In oh, game. yeah. I, that game's on my, on my want it's list. A, it's a fun one. It's great. I beat the whole thing. Cool. Cool. Okay, well, that just about wraps it up. Uh, Derek, I guess we'll be talking in a few weeks about E3, which is exciting. Sounds good, Peter. Okay. Uh, well, this is Peter signing out. <laughs> this is Derek. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>